Will the Canon R1 do 6K RAW? Will it do 4K 60HQ? And will the global shutter be capable of 1 8,000th of a second? I also have a brief update on the Osmo 4. This and more coming up after the intro. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning into The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, or tutorials. And by the way, I'm giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full-frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Details are in the description down below, or you can watch this video here, but essentially all you have to do is subscribe for your chance to win. Now the Canon EOS R1 will be able to shoot 4K video at up to 60 frames per second and in HQ mode. Unlike the Canon R5, it won't have 8K downsample or even 8K RAW, but it will have 6K downsample. The next question, of course, would be, will it have 6K RAW? Well, it's more likely that RAW will be included in the R1 since the R5 supports RAW and, of course, the R1 or the higher level camera, the 1DX in the case of the past, had more video features than the R5, which used to be the 5D. The question, though, I have is, will it include ProRes RAW on the camera or through an external recorder? Or what about a firmware update to bring it to the R5? And on that, unfortunately, we're just going to have to wait and see. Now, I was told that the R1 won't overheat in any video mode. Pause for dramatic effect there. And this is likely due to the larger body, considerably larger than the R5. This is an image of the R1 that I created based on the feedback from my source. As you can see, it's kind of a combination in size between the 1DX Mark III and the C70. Bigger than the 1DX Mark III, but a very similar footprint, and yet not as thick as the C70. And now back to the photo capabilities. The Canon EOS R1 is a full-frame mirrorless camera with a global shutter. There's no mechanical shutter to get in the way to prevent photographers from using a flash, and they can do that without getting any banding. Now, I'm sure that you, like me, would like to see some reviews or to see this tested out before pre-ordering the R1. And one other thing, I was corrected on my speculation that 20 stops of dynamic range in the R1 would be in the computational modes only. The Canon EOS R1 will have 20 stops of dynamic range in all standard photo modes. But as we all know, the stated range is always different from the effective range. The Canon EOS R1 will have about 16 stops of effective dynamic range. Canon would like to deliver a shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second, but it's definitely a balancing act in firmware. The difficulty with increasing the shutter speed is the potential reduction in dynamic range, and this is how it's been in the past. And yes, some of you have actually come out and told me that, Simon, if we have a global shutter, the, 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 the dynamic range isn't going to be as good. I wasn't trying that for dramatic purposes, I just couldn't get the words out. Anyhow, the red Komodo, the Red Komodo is capable of doing 16 stops of dynamic range and does have a global shutter. It's possible that Canon is playing around with the voltages to reach higher shutter speeds without sacrificing dynamic range. My source speculated that Canon could include optical low-pass filters as the R1 has no shutter to get in the way. These are normally found in some cinema cameras but have been an option for professional stills cameras in the past. They simply snap over the sensor and can easily be done without you having to send your camera in for service. Examples of optical or OLPFs include ones designed for astrophotography, infrared, highlight skin tones, black and white, and many more. The EOS R1 is expected to cost, are you ready for this? $1,000 more than the 1DX, and it's going to be that much more capable than the 1DX. The R1 is a pro camera, and it's aimed at pros. I'm really glad to see photo specs that are leaking out this time instead of focusing on restricted high-end video capabilities. And now, on to the other news. I've been so preoccupied with the Canon EOS R1 leaks, finishing up my review on the VideoMic Pro and the Sennheiser MKE400, and sourcing new gear that I haven't paid much attention to the update on the Canon Cinema plans for 2021. The main reason being is that there isn't a lot of substance. There's very little to get excited over, other than here's the lineup expected in 2021. But what will get updated? How many will have the RF mount? How many will get a global shutter? Craig said that the cinema lineup by the end of 2021 will look like this. We already know about the C70 as Canon's made an official announcement, and I hope to have this camera here soon. The aforementioned C50 will be released and we will get the C90. But will there be a C200 Mark II or something better to take its place? 
the EF mount C300 was released this year and is a solid cinema camera. And now for something new from DJI. DJI announced the smartphone stabilizer, better known as the Osmo Mobile 4. It's lost a little bit of weight and size over its predecessor, the motors have been upgraded, and the software received an update as well. And like everything this year, the price of the Osmo 4 has increased. It will cost $149, up $20 from the Osmo 3. But the end result of this upgrade is the ability to better track and keep focused subjects. But is it needed? What makes a smartphone the best camera on the market is that it's with us all the time. Are you willing to bring the Osmo with you everywhere you go, or maybe just on vacations or other events? The reason I ask is that modern smartphones come with image stabilizing technologies and they're getting better and better. The iPhone 12 improves stabilization, borrowing in-body image stabilization from mirrorless cameras by moving the sensor around, keeping the image smooth. Before considering the Osmo, consider improving your filming skills to better stabilize the smartphone. It always comes down to the basics, and at the very least, You'll get more out of the Osmo if you do. But that's my two cents. But that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win the Cinco Lav S6E and M3 shotgun microphones. I'll be awarding these two prizes once my channel reaches 20,000 subscribers, which isn't too far away. And then for every 20,000, sorry, then for every 10,000 subscribers from then on, I'll be awarding a better and more expensive prize until the channel reaches 100,000 subscribers. At which point, I'll be awarding the brand new Canon EOS R5 full-frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. And on that bombshell, thanks for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.